Well, hey, man, I know we got a few more minutes, maybe a few more people popping in, but I want to go ahead and open up with the word of prayer. And again, we thank and praise God for all the things that, that he's doing and I missed. And see, we just don't want to lose sight of who God is and all the things that he is yet doing on our behalf, despite those things we may be going through right now. We know that God is able to deliver and will see us through. And so we just got to continue to pray and stand in the gap, interceding one for another, that God will have his way. Amen. Father God, we come before you this morning. We thank you and we praise you for another day. Another day that was not promised to any one of us, oh God, but you have allowed us to, to see it. And we just want to say we thank you and we praise you for it. God, I just ask right now, God, that you uh, hear all the prayer requests that have been made this, this morning, God. We just ask and pray that you move by your spirit. I lift up Brother Miller, Sister Miller, his sister-in-law, Father God, his co-workers, those that are stricken with cancer. I lift up his brother Thomas to you right now, God, and his wife Vicky. I just ask that you would have your way in their lives, God, as they continue to lean depend upon you. But we know, God, that you are able to do all things but fail. And so we just put our trust, our faith, and belief in you. Father, just trust in your word, God, and we stand upon your word, for we know that you hasten to perform that on all of our behalf. And so I just ask that you would just continue to have your way within us, God, as we yield ourselves unto you. I lift up, oh God, Sister Yolanda's request, God, for Brother Tracy and Malachi, and as well as herself, God, not being affected at this time, God. And so I just thank and praise you for what you're doing. And I know that you're going to deliver, Brother Tracy, God. Father, and we just thank and praise you for it now by faith believing that you are moving by your spirit. And God, I pray for all the members that have been touched in some way, shape, or form, God, in the physical sense, God. Just ask and pray that you get moved by your spirit. I lift up Brother Dave to you right now, God. And I lift up his wife, Sister Chase, so God, as she's uh, having some symptoms as well, God. I just pray that you would have your way in the midst of each of them in Jesus' name. I lift up, oh God, Brother Tito, his family, she, God, for those that are traveling to and fro. God, be with them, watch over them, God. Dispatch your ministry name, just being camped around about them. And God, we just thank you for being who you are in our lives, God. Despite those things that are going on in the world today, God, and we know these things are going to be, Father, we think that we can look to you and keep our eyes focused on you, Father, and keep our eyes on the finish line, God, that one day we're going to be with you. I continue to lift up marriages, God, all over the land and country, God, that people begin to recognize that they need you in the midst of their union, God, husbands and wives and, and you, God, in the midst, God, as we're going through various trials, oh God, in life, we know that you are there to help us and to see us through all the things that we face. God, I thank and I praise you for that. We continue to lift up leaders all around the world, God. I pray for President Biden, God, and all the resistance that he's going through right now, God. I just pray that you would have your way, God, in, in the midst, God, that you would touch uh, our senators, you touch our representatives, God, our Supreme Court justices, Father, the policemen and judges, all those in positions of authority. We lift them up before you right now, God, and pray that they will do the right thing according to your word, oh God. And Father, just pray that they would yield themselves unto you because we know, God, that you are in control and you are just, you are righteous, God, and you are faithful. And so we just say, have your way in the midst. We lift up, oh God, our family members to you right now, God, those that are with us, those that are separated from us, God. Father, have your way in each of our lives, God. We know that we need you, God. We recognize who you are and the things that you are well able to do. And God, we just submit ourselves unto you. We pray, God, that your will is our will, God, and we will go forth in it in Jesus' name. God, as we submit ourselves unto you, we'll humble ourselves under your almighty hand. And Father, I pray for the, our nation, God. I pray that we will turn to you, God, and begin to seek your face, oh God. And I pray for the people of God, that we're the ones, oh God, that need to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, oh God. Father, you said, then when you hear from heaven, you will heal our land, you will forgive our sin, oh God. And so we're praying right now, God, that we're standing in the gap, God, and that we will be used by you, oh God, to be an example to the world today. God, have your way in Jesus' name. We lift up our children to you right now, God. Those that are in school right now, those that are preparing to go to school, back into school next month. God, those that are on their way to, to college, we just ask and pray that you bless them, God. And we pray that they walk in the precepts in which they have been taught by their parents, oh God, that they will walk as responsible citizens, oh God, and go forth leaning and dependent upon you. And I just thank and praise you, God, for answered prayers. God, for the things that you are, are yet doing in our midst, God, we want to just acknowledge that, God, Father, the things that that you are doing, God, and how you have kept us in the midst of the things that we're going through. And God, I pray for Brother Miller, God, as he brings forth your lesson this morning. And I just touch our hearts, so God, that we will be ready to receive and that will apply to our lives. We will be the better for it in Jesus' name. And God, again, we just trust you, Father, to work all things out for our good. Even for God, if it doesn't look like you're moving, we believe by faith that you are moving. You are moving in the midst of the unseen. 
And so I just thank you, God, that you that you are there, that you are everywhere. You see and know all the things that are going on in all of our lives. So I just pray that you have your way. I look to pull God, Brother Bruce, to you guys. As he prepares to, to move, to relocate. God, I just ask and pray that you would be with him every leg of that journey, God. And Father, that everything will work out for, for good. In Jesus' name, God, I just thank you and praise you, God, for his faithfulness, his dedication and commitment to you. God, Father, I just thank you for all the those members that are there right now, God, just standing in the gap, interceding one for another and going forth, being of service unto you, unto the kingdom. God, have your way in the name of Jesus. And again, Father, I lift up Brother Ricky Rice to you, God. I lift up Brother Baker to you, guys. He's going through his treatments. God, I just pray that you have your way in, in the midst, oh God. Father, I continue to pray for our daughter Linda, God. You continue to touch her body, heal in the name of Jesus, oh God, as she goes forth from day to day, God, that she would get stronger and stronger. I continue to lift up my mother, God, to you, and just know, God, that you're able to, 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 to strengthen her, God, that you're able to perform a miracle on her behalf, God, that she would be able to walk again before you call her home. God, I just ask and pray that you move by your spirit. I lift up my sister Maria to you, God, with the, the brain leakage, oh God, I just ask and pray, God, that as she goes in, God, uh, next week, I just ask and pray that you touch the hands of those that will be uh, performing the surgery, God, and doing what they need to do. But ultimately, we know, God, that you are our healer, that you are the cure for all the ailments, though, God, that we may have. God, just continue to move by your spirit in Jesus' name. And again, I just thank and praise you, God, for safe travels. God, thank you for Brother Pastor Williams and his wife making it back to Korea, God, after a couple of weeks of the COVID episodes here, God. And continue to lift up Pastor Stevens and his wife, God. Have your way in their lives even the more. Again, we thank you and we praise you and we say, move by your spirit in the midst of this Sunday school, in the midst of the morning worship. Touch, oh God, Pastor, uh, Minister Dickerson, God, as he brings forth your word this morning, God, we just ask that you will speak through him as he yields himself unto you. Have your way, oh God. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Turn over to Brother Miller. God bless you, Brother Rice. Uh, can I confirm that you guys can see the slides? Uh, yes. yes, we can see it. Okay, so we're continuing on in the unit two, uh, and this is, I believe, the last uh, lesson of unit two. The title is Faithful to Prophesy. That's lesson four, and the title is Ezekiel Brings Hope to Israel. Uh, the lesson text is coming out of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Uh, the related scriptures are coming out of Isaiah 26, 12 through 19, chapter 49, verses 13 through 26, from Hosea, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9, and then again, again, then again from Ezekiel, uh, chapter 37, and the remaining verses of that chapter, 15 through 28. Uh, the time uh, for uh, these visions, these vivid visions from God that Ezekiel has been lifted up by the spirit uh, to relay to the, uh, the captives in Babylon is 571 uh, BC. Our golden text, and I shall read it for you, is coming from Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall, and I shall place in your own in your own land, then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. And I'll go ahead and read the uh, the scripture uh, the scripture lesson text. I know on my screen I have another uh, screen to the right that's kind of obscuring it, so I'm going to the uh, the expository book. So it's coming out of Ezekiel chapter 37, and this is verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which is full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open, open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, 
and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then, then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. <clears throat> so I prophesied as he, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place, place you in your own land. Then ye shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. So I'll start out with the uh, an introduction. So the Babylonians invaded Judah three times, and on each occasion took a number of captives. Ezekiel was one of those captives who was taken to Babylon during the second major deportation of Jews in 597 BC. He first functioned as a priest among the exiles. Five years later, though, he was called to the prophetic ministry. And that's coming from Ezekiel chapter one, verses one through two. His messages to the exiles in Babylon parallel the warning of certain defeat that the prophet Jeremiah was uttering at the same time in Judah, in Judah. Through a series of visions, Ezekiel was able to describe events for the captives that were taking place in Judah long before word from the homeland could reach them. Like Jeremiah, Ezekiel wanted to prepare the people for the fall of Jerusalem and quell any false hopes they had concerning the speedy return to Judah. However, once the city fell, Ezekiel became a prophet of hope. So this is the, uh, this is the lesson outline. It's in three topics of revived bones, resurrected body, and restored blessings. Now, the, the next slide, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, put together uh, like a res Ezekiel's resume uh, just to, so that we can become familiar with Ezekiel the man. So Ezekiel, uh, he was a prophet to the captives in Babylon. Uh, he was a son of Buzi, a Zedokite priest. Ezekiel was married and is, by all accounts, he was child, childless. Uh, his, camp, his contemporaries were Jehoiada, Chin, Jeremiah, Jehoiakim, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar. His strengths and accomplishments, he was a priest by training, a prophet by God's call. He received the God's vivid visions and delivered powerful messages. He served as God's messenger during Israel's captivity in Babylon. God shaped his character to fit his mission. A tough and stalwart man to reach, a hard and stubborn people. And that's coming from Ezekiel chapter three, uh, verse eight. Now lessons that we can learn from Ezekiel's life, uh, even the repeated failures of his people will not prevent God's plan. 
for the world from being fulfilled. Each person's response to God determines his or her eternal destiny. Now God has people through whom he can work evenly, even in seemingly hopeless situations. Now the key verses uh, from Ezekiel are coming from chapter three, uh, verses 10 through 10 and 11. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears and go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So Ezekiel was to receive God's word in his heart before preaching them to others. God's message must seek deep into our hearts and show into our actions before we can effectively help others understand and apply it. So I'll, uh, I'll continue with the lesson. The first topic was uh, revived bones and the subtopic is Valley of the Dry Bones. Like other prophets, Ezekiel spoke through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. What is unusual about Ezekiel is that the book speaks of numerous times when the prophet was transported to different locations in chapter three, in chapter eight, and chapter 11. Whether Ezekiel was actually physically transported to different places or these were simply visionary experiences is a matter of debate. Whatever the case may be, the Lord used these visions to communicate his message to Ezekiel, who in turn delivered it to the Jews, the Jewish exiles in Babylonia. Ezekiel was carried to a valley full of dry bones, where Ezekiel saw his vision of the majesty of God. He also saw the desolation, desolation of the exiles. The scene would have been unsettling to say the least. It was as if a great battle had, had been fought in this place with only the skeletons of the fallen soldiers remaining. The bodies of the slain had not been buried. The bones were dried and bleached by the sun. There were, there were many and very dry. Perhaps Ezekiel and the captives saw such scenes as they passed devastated cities on their way to Babylon. Now the second subtopic is can these bones live? Now over 90 times Ezekiel is referred to as son of man. Now I have a question uh, for the group. So why is Ezekiel called son of man if it were a title reserved for Jesus? Does anybody have a, any comment? I look at it as, as Ezekiel being a typology, a typology of, of, of God, of Christ, uh, in, in the role in which he's in. And it's, it's like God uses various people to, to perform his will. And, and as you think about it, the son of God, which is Jesus Christ, he's also talked about as the son of man as well. But, but I just believe in, the, in this particular case, the Son of Man is, is being used as a, as a typology, is, is my opinion on it. So in my studies, uh, and uh, I know when uh, Son of Man is used, uh, is a rather common term in the Bible. And it's basically simply means man. Uh, it emphasizes the humanity of a person. Uh, now, and Pastor Brown just brought it up, he said, the son of man. There's that article, that grammar article, the. Uh, and that's only associated with Jesus. Jesus always referred to himself as the son of man. As in their only one, as in the only one there is. In Jesus' case, the application of the title Son of Man also highlights the humanity of Christ. 
the difference is that he is the son of man, that he is the epitome of hum humanity. Jesus is the sinless one, humanity perfected, the one to finally reconcile God to man. Now, as Ezekiel surveyed the valley of dry bones, he was asked, can these bones live? Ezekiel responded by saying, oh Lord, thou knowest. And uh, I have a, just a follow-up question or, or a different question. Is this an affirmation of faith or a statement of uncertainty by Ezekiel? Uh, seeking your comments. Okay, so faith leaves the question of possibility to rest with God, with whom nothing is impossible. Now, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32, verse 39, and I'll, I'll have to read uh, verses 37 and 38 uh, to put it into some context. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? Which did they, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Now, verse 39 says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Now, we fast forward into the gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 27, and Jesus which reads, and Jesus looking upon them saith, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Now an image of Christian faith which believes in the coming of general resurrection of the dead, in spite of all appearances against it, because God had said it. In John chapter five, verse 21 it says, for as the father raised up the dead and quicketh them, even so the son of even so the son quickeneth whom he will. In Romans 4:17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Second Corinthians 1 9. But we had the sense of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. So I believe that uh, Ezekiel, uh, it was an affirmation. It wasn't, there wasn't no doubt. He spoke it, he spoke it without, without thinking. Uh, he had faith that God could, uh, could breathe breath into these bones, add sinews, the tendons uh, to the bones and lay skin upon the bones. Now, the, the, the third uh, subtopic is prophesy to these bones. Ezekiel was now called upon to speak to the bones that lay before him in the valley, as he had proclaimed God's message to the captive Jews. Now he was to call out, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. While preaching to the dead might seem an exercise in futility, God's word has the power to create in Genesis of one and three, and to raise the dead. And from Deuteronomy, the verses of chapter two, verse 39, which I read, John five, verses 24 through 29, and then Romans uh, four through 17, four and 17. Ezekiel was assured that these dry bones representing the people of Israel would be resuscitated by the word of God, brought up from their temporary their present temporary graves and resettled in their own land to enjoy once more the blessings of the covenant covenant. In the immediate context, the exiles are the intended subjects. No doubt they felt their hope of returning to their homeland was in vain as a preacher addressing a cemetery audience. The fall of Jerusalem had seemed to drive the nails of the coffin that was their exile. There was no more hope of return and a new life in the homeland. 
Many believe that this vision has a, has a large fulfillment related to the end times and Israel's salvation. It is the plain forecast of the converse, conversion of the Jews to Christ, as Paul also foretold in Romans 11, 15, and then in 25, uh, verse 26. Uh, the final sub, subtopic is ye shall live. Ezekiel was not sure whether the bones would live. The Lord now answered the question he had asked earlier. God would cause breath to enter the dry bones and they would come to life. Just as God breathed, in, breathed into lifeless clay in the beginning and gave Adam life, so, so a similar scene <coughs> is depicted here. The Hebrew word translated breath can also be rendered spirit or wind. The context usually suggests the best translation. It is the same word that lies behind the double meaning of word, wind, and spirit in John 3, 8. In 3, 8. It covers not only man's vital breath given to him at birth and leaving his body in his dying gas, but also the spirit of God who imparts that breath. While the bones would live, they would, not, they would not do so as animated bones, animated skeletons. Instead, God would cause tendons, muscles, and skin to come upon the bones. They would be complete human bodies. And finally, God promised, I will put breath in you, and ye shall live. Since God alone has such power, this would testify to the fact that the Lord was a source of this new life. I'll pause for questions at the end of this topic. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Whereas you were making a comment in, in verse three, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And he just see the response. And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. You know, and, and so as Ezekiel is, is being instructed on what to say, you know, he's trusting God. He's believing God. He, there's no doubt in his mind, you know, that what God is, is saying is going to come to pass. And, and I, I believe that's the way that it is for us today. If God speaks to us and he tells us certain things that he wants done, we have to trust him at his word and go forth and perform it as if this is, this is God speaking to me and this is what he said. There should not be any doubt. Uh, it's nothing that's impossible for God. And, and when you think about the things that sometimes God says, it seems uh, impossible to us, but it's not impossible with God. And so we just have to trust God and, and go out and, and do the things that God is calling us forth to do because we serve a God of impossibilities. There's nothing that God can't do. And another part of the, the fact is, you know, we, we may walk around and we, and we literally could be walking around as the walking dead, you know, spiritually speaking. And But when God says these things can happen, the, the life can be in us, then it, it can be. And we can have this life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so I thank him, yes, the answer is yes, we, we, we can live. You know, and again, we all were born in sin and iniquity, but God brought about change through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, for all of us. And so we were like the dry bones, but now we have life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we will continue on with uh, the topic, resurrected bodies from Ezekiel 37 uh, verses seven through 10. As I was commanded, like all those who are serious about doing God's will, the man of God did as he was commanded. As soldiers of the cross, we don't question our commander. Rather, we are to obey him. Uh, now from John, 14 verse 15 if he loved me keep my commandments now I'll, i'm going to relay an experience that i had uh back in january I, I believe it was either december of uh 2020 or uh january of 2021 when my wife was visiting uh nicole here in korea and i was uh and i remained in augusta georgia so one morning, uh, early morning, I, I don't know what time it is. It was in the early a.m. 
one, two, or three o'clock in the morning, I was uh, awakened by a loud, thunderous voice. Now, this voice, this voice in my head, it wasn't mental. I believe it was spiritual. It commanded me and simply said, pray. So what I did, and I did as commanded in this voice is, I immediately started to pray for everything and anything, everyone and anyone. Uh, for my son, my daughter, my wife, family, friends, someone at that hour, at that minute, was in need of immediate prayer. And my question or comment back to you, does any, um, did anyone else have any similar experience where you were encouraged, commanded, or directed by the Holy Spirit? Well, brother, well, I can honestly say through um, through various uh, Bible lessons and plans I've studied, um, we're definitely encouraged not to be selfish in our prayers uh, because there's so much prayer needed in the world. You know, in our own personal lives, we may be comfortable and and everything is going fairly well for the most part, and we can get thankful and lack, but at the same time, lackadaisical because so many out there that don't know God aren't praying, don't know how to pray, don't know what to pray. So as it's been said by Pastor Brown and many in the past, that it is a part of our purpose to pray on behalf of those. We're, we're intercessors. Christ is an intercessor for us, and we are intercessors for one another, especially for the loss of the world. And, you know, I truly believe that's why it does say in Scripture, you know, to pray without ceasing because it is necessary and through us is the closest um, connection that the lost will ever have to God, you know, through our prayers for them. So interceding on their behalf is a, a mighty and necessary thing that we must do in order for um, God to be able to reach those who are lost in the world, I believe. I can attest to what you were saying, Brother Miller, you know, there's been times when the spirit of God has, has quickened me as well. And we just have to yield yield ourselves to the spirit because we may not know uh, what it is that we need to be praying for, but the Holy Spirit knows. And so he's He's using us as a vessel. If we yield ourselves, he can use us to uh, to be able to pray for, for not only those that we know, but about the things that, that he's praying through our uh, through our spirit man. And so it's important that we take the time to, uh, to obey and to do, to, to go into action and pray. Prayer is vitally important that we pray. I agree too, um, Brother Miller. Um, I've actually had that happen to me several times. And um, sometimes, well, in, in, in the past, I've kind of slept through it. Um, but, you know, God will wake me up. And it's usually in the wee hours of the morning when everything is quiet and everything is still. And, um, you know, he'll, he'll wake me up and, and I don't count it as a coincidence, uh, waking up that early because I usually don't. So anytime I'm awakened that early in the morning, I always feel that it's for a particular purpose and a particular reason. So I immediately start to pray, even if he doesn't reveal to me who I need to pray for, it's just automatic for me to go down, you know, my list of family members and, things of that nature, those that we are actually apart from being over here in, in Korea. Um, I always feel like there is a purpose. And, you know, I was, I've been disobedient in the past because, you know, we get comfortable and two or three o'clock in the morning is, you know, at the pretty much at the peak of our sleep and at the peak of our rest. But, you know, we just have to, to be obedient, you know, to his voice and to the unction of the Holy Spirit. And, <laughs> Anytime he wakes us up at that time, I've always realized that is is definitely for a divine purpose. Amen. Amen. 
So I'll continue on with that topic as I was commanded. It is doubtful that Ezekiel anticipated what happened next. As he prophesied, there was a noise and a shaking uh, that prob probably describes the coming together of the bones that have been scattered across the valley. After the coming together of the bones, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. As modern readers, we can easily visualize this since we have seen such things in the special effects of movies. Even though, these, even though these bodies had been created by the power of God, they were lifeless. There was no breath in them. At this point, upon, upon the plane, there was nothing more than an extensive army of fresh uh, cadavers. The subtopic B, prophesy, son of man. As noted earlier, the word translated wind is the same word that, same word also rendered breath or spirit. It is this which reanimates the dead. The Hebrew word ruach, wind, breath, spirit, in Ezekiel is a supernatural power which not only energizes the prophet and induces uh, states of ecstasy, but that force which revitalizes Israel. Four winds uh, from verse 9 refers to the four directions of the compass. Considering the vast number of lifeless bodies strewn across the valley, breath from all directions was needed to fill the lungs of, of all of them. So I prophesied as he commanded me, verse 10, declared the man of God. Obedience to God's command resulted in breath coming upon them, these slain. Now with the breath of life within them, they stood up, they stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. While no specific number is given, Ezekiel was impressed with the vastness of this host before them, before him. Throughout this vision, Ezekiel had acted under orders and has even described his own implicit obedience to God's command. In, in, in so doing, Ezekiel emphasized that this work of revival is God's work from start to finish. If man plays any part in it himself, it is only in obedience to God's direction. The same can be said of man's contribution to any spiritual revival. Now we'll continue on with uh, the third subtopic, which is restored blessings. And the first subtopic is these bones are Israel. While the son of man may have been pondering the meaning of the vision, it now became apparent. These bones are the whole house of Israel. Since the Northern kingdom of Israel had already fallen some 137 years earlier and with Judah now held captives by the Babylonians, all hope seemed lost. There are however, no lost causes with God. There are no help, hopeless uh, cases with the Almighty. In Proverbs 13, verse 12, hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. These revived bones represented the whole house of Israel. As with other prophecies, a, complete, a completely restored nation was in view. While it might be argued that the return of the Jews from the Babylonian captivity fulfilled this prophecy, there are facets of the prophecy that remained unfulfilled. Now, later in the chapter, Ezekiel envisioned a time when David would again rule over Israel. And that's from uh, the same chapter, but from verses 24 and 25. Many see this as having its ultimate fulfillment of the coming of the son of David. Matthew 1, verse 1, Romans 1, verse 3. Jesus Christ, and especially at his second coming. At first, Ezekiel preached judgment. Now he proclaimed hope. The exiles were saying, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. To know that their nation was not completely forsaken by God was the comforting message Ezekiel was called upon to deliver. Similarly, the preaching of the gospel will of necessity speak of God's judgment upon sin. We must not, however, fail to offer 
the hope of the gospel to lost people. And from the Colossians uh, chapter one, verse 23 reads, if ye continue in faith grounded and settled and be, not, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, graves open is the second uh, subtopic. While the opening of the graves may be symbolic of the restoration of the nation, it could also have more literal meaning of a physical resurrection from the dead. We think that in some passages as, as this, there may be both a literal and a figurative meaning. Just as in Matthew 24, some of Jesus's words seem to refer to this, the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the world, uh, one typical of the other. Generally speaking, there is very little in the Old Testament concerning the concept of a bodily res resurrection. There are, however, occasional statements that depict a future, a future resurrection. Now, Daniel spoke of a time of tribulation from which God's people would be delivered. And, 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 uh, and that's from uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> the prophet then added, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Of course, the teachings of Christ and his apostles greatly illuminate our understanding of the topic of the resurrection of the body. This power over the grave will remind the people of Israel that the Lord is the only true God. Likewise, we know that Jesus is, a, is the Christ because he came forth from the tomb on the third day. He was declared to be the son of God by the, by the resurrection from the dead, Romans 1 and 4. His resurrection is the first fruits and our guarantee of a future resurrection. Now, God's spirit within is the, is the final topic. God again promised, I shall place you in your own land. For the exiles, this was the message of hope they needed to hear, repeated over and over. Like the promise of Jeremiah that God's laws would be written on the, on the heart, Ezekiel was told that God was going to implant the spirit with his people. Earlier, God said, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And that's from Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. The concept of the coming of God's spirit upon his people is presented several times in the prophets, in Isaiah, again in Ezekiel, and in Joel. Perhaps that is why Jesus was surprised that Nicodemus did not immediately grasp the concept of being born of the spirit. And that's coming from Jack, John chapter three, uh, verse eight, and also verse 10. Ezekiel had the huge privilege bringing these words of hope to God's people. The final word to Ezekiel in, in this vision was, and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. And that's our, goal, that's our golden text. God is faithful to his people and to his promises. Of that, we can absolutely be certain. I'll pause for comments at this point. One thing I like about um, something you had mentioned earlier about uh, hope deferred um, and thinking about the, the lesson here, it talks about the Valley of Dry Bones and the description of the bones being dry 
shows the extent to which uh, the situation seemed to be far gone. But in this case, we know with God, nothing is impossible. So even though these bones were so old and so dry to where they seem to be useless, when God comes on the scene, you know, he brings life to a situation. He, be, he breathes breath, breath into it. So um, it's, it's just a, a reviving message to let us know that um, God is always there and God is always working behind the scenes to bring about his purposes and to glorify his name through us. Okay, so, so that brings us to, to the conclusion of this uh, lesson. And uh, Ezekiel, so Ezekiel's opportunity to provide the people of Israel with hope following the Babylonian captivity was a great blessing for him and God's people. This faithfulness to discern God's message and prophesy it faithfully gives us hope, even today as we consider our spiritual conditions before, holy, before a holy God. God stands ready and willing to grant forgiveness and new life to those spiritual skeletons resulting from unregenerated hearts. Keep sharing the gospel truths with others. So I saw that the uh, looks like Pastor Brown had uh, has dropped off, probably due to uh, internet connectivity. So I'll I'll, co I'll conclude this uh, this uh, Bible study lesson by reading Psalm ninety one. Uh, hopefully it'll give uh, my Tito time to uh, help Minister Dickerson, you know, prepare for the sermon at 11. So Psalm 91, and, and, and this says, you know, my wife prays this and she has less lesser symptoms than all three of us. And, you know, prayerfully, uh, it'll continue to be that way. Also with, uh, you know, Yolanda and your son Malachi and the rest of the FCFC uh, brothers and sisters that are that have illness. And uh, so I'm gonna read Psalm 91 in its, in its entirety from verse one through 16. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the, mo of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that waketh, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall, be no, e there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. So this uh, concludes the, the Sunday school lesson today. I pray for, for healing for all of you. Uh, I thank you for listening and thank you for all your comments. And God bless you all. Thank you.
Amen. We thank God for uh, another beautiful, wonderful Sunday school lesson. I thank God for his prophets, for those messages that he sent forth to, uh, to guide us uh, through his word. And just as he used Ezekiel and as he's used others, but he used them to, to bring forth the word. Yes, he sends forth judgment and understand that judgment is going to come. But we also have this comfort in knowing that God can restore and restore us if, if we get things right with him. And so I thank God that even though judgment is going to come, we can go through it knowing that God is, is going to work all things out for our good as we commit ourselves to doing his will and his work. And, uh, and so again, judgment came on, 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 the, on, on the Jews and judgment came upon the, the Gentiles as we were reading through this lesson. And you just know that God is there. He sees all, he knows all, but again, we put our trust in him and we walk in the obedience of, of his word, then things are going to be well with us. And so again, thank God for grace and for mercy. Even though we fall, we don't have to stay down. We can get back up again in Jesus Christ and we can get it right with him. We can repent, you know, and, and, and God will move in the midst of that. And so there's a, some, an, ask, an action that we need to partake in as far as uh, repenting and, and getting it right with God. And again, God is merciful. And I thank him for his, his mercy. They are new every, every morning, new every day. So we thank and praise God for, in spite of how we may act, God is going to always be righteous in what he does. And so I thank him and I, and I praise him for that. Any, any other comments this morning? Well, amen. Well, again, we thank you again, Brother Miller, for bringing forth the word this morning. And just as Brother Miller said, we want to continue to pray for all those that we have sent the, the prayer email out requesting prayer. We want to continue to pray that God will have his way, that the healing will be manifested in our bodies. And we want to continue to, to trust and believe God. You know, we know God is our healer. We know God is the great physician, the great I am. And so we trust and believe that, that all will be well, despite what we may be experiencing right now, God is able to deliver and he will. We trust him that, that he will. And uh, I thank God for, for his word that he sent to, to heal us and, and what Jesus Christ did for all of us to, to overcome sickness, death, disease, and, and all those things. He took care of it all for us. And so we may be going through some things, but God is able to deliver us out of it all. And he says, the writer said in Psalm 34, I believe verse 19, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God deliver them out of them all. So again, we just continue to trust that God will see us through all that we're facing even now. Amen. Let's start this word of prayer. Father God, again, we come before you this morning. We thank you and we praise you for the word being spread this morning. We thank you for our presenter, Brother Miller, God. We ask blessings upon him, God, in his physical body, God, as well as his wife, God. And Father, the others that we made mention of this morning, God, we lift up Brother Dave to you. We lift up Brother Tracy to you. God, we lift our brother Baker to you. We just ask and pray that you have your way in each of them, God, in Jesus' name. And we know you to be our healer, God. We know that we can put our trust in you. We know, God, that you hasten to perform your promises in all of our lives, God, as we continue to seek you. And God, just thank you and praise you, God, for what you're doing right now, that you're having your way in our lives. God, we're thanking you for the manifestation of healing taking place even now. God, even as we say, we continue to trust and believe in you. Have your will, God. Continue to move by your spirit. We lift up, oh God, the morning worship service to you right now that is taking place. God, we're asking that you have your way. We welcome your presence in this place. I ask, oh God, that you touch the heart of Minister Dickerson, God, as he comes forth with your word this morning, God. Touch our hearts, oh God. Father, help us to, to receive what's being spoken, oh God, into our lives. That we will apply to our lives that we will be the better for it. God, have your way, oh God. Move by your spirit. We welcome you, oh God, in our lives to do what you choose to do, God, for all of us. And again, I just thank you and praise you for being a prayer answering God. I thank you, God, that we can speak life, God, through your word. God, have your way in our midst. Again, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.